welcome everybody welcome this is a special edition of sports stuff hub live episode number 48 here on this september 7th tuesday night as a special treat for tonight we have our division number three fantasy draft of the sports stuff hub fantasy football league 2021 brought to you by ultra pro so we are about two and a half minutes away from the draft it looks like we are getting the majority in we're still missing one, two three four it looks like as you can see there we go and we just gained one more so now we're down to three left i'm gonna text everybody that I can looks like we're down to just two left and so our teams tonight in this draft are team Mata who has pick number one Vegas Winkfield has pick number two unsportsmanlike conduct with pick number three me at pick number four uh, team shield at number five Honolulu Sharks at six, Doveville Brooks and Dungey are number seven, Pocket Rocket at eight, Rigo's Smoke Shack, pick number nine, Team White uh, Whitecho 305 uh, at pick 10, we have uh, Team Nick at 11, Radzalowski and Lee Landers at pick number 12 rounding out the snake draft. This is a 12-team league. Make sure I got all my settings up. Uh, this is a 12-team league. And we have three divisions for this league. We are literally 30 seconds from starting, so I'm kind of excited for this. I've hosted two other of our divisions so far. And this is number three. that's about to take place with the season starting on th th this week trying to get everything going here looks like Isaiah is ready to go we are just missing one person for the draft welcome and to the best day of the year draft day and I'm gonna turn the sound off on my end so that it doesn't keep interfering. Okay, so here we go. Isaiah has pick number one. And Isaiah goes Christian McCaffrey, number one overall. Now, it's hard to say whether Christian McCaffrey or Alvin Kamara is the best pick at one. Because uh, quite honestly, Christian McCaffrey, Free um, would have finished in first place had he played the entire season at the he was at to start last season. <laughs> Excuse me. Alvin Kamara was the uh, highest scoring position player outside of quarterback uh, that uh, rounded out fantasy last year. Dalvin Cook goes number two overall to Vegas Winkfield. And Kamara off the board to unsportsmanlike conduct which puts me up next and you know what i gotta i gotta do it i've got to take derrick henry with him sitting on the board i know saquon is ranked higher i don't buy it my sound is still on I, I just muted it a second ago, unless it's, oh, you know what, it might be. I You know what, I think it just is the internal sound on the computer. And then Tra Travis Kelsey goes number five overall to Team Shield, who happens to be a uh, Kansas City fan. Anyways. So that works out. Now we have Sharks on the board at pick 
number six, and the Sharks go with Ezekiel Elliott. So that puts Brooks and Dungey on the board at pick number seven. Now, I will say this. I have horrible luck when it comes to drafting running backs in the first round. My statistics of the last four years of playing fantasy football, three of the four years, my first round quarterback has gotten hurt within the first three weeks of the season. <clears throat> so, I'm not expecting anything fantastic from Derrick Henry this year because he fell to me at four. <clears throat> It is what it is. I've learned to deal with it. It's unfortunate for me, but there's nothing I can do about it. Um, I've had Ezekiel Elliott in previous years. I've had Alvin Kamara in previous years. I had Alvin Kamara last year, and thankfully he made it through the season for me and helped me take third place last year. I struggle with first-round running backs. And I have been cursed ever since LaDainian Tomlinson. And it has been this way since I got him in back-to-back -back years um, in the first round. And he absolutely just... And we have... Saquon going to Brooks and Dungy at number 7, followed by Jonathan Taylor going to Pocket Rocket at number 8. Uh, Riggo Smoke Shack is on the board at pick number nine. Miles says, I'm glad you picked Henry. I didn't want him in two leagues. I had to. I really had to. And we've got Devontae Adams off the board to Riggo's Smoke Shack. We weren't looking to fill. It was a, um, we, we just had it open and uh, I didn't have anybody that had to take a second spot. So, uh, we're good. If I would have had enough to fill a fourth division or a fifth division, I'd have run with it. Adams at nine is a great pick. That is a great pick. I kind of expected him to go a little bit higher. I expected him to be right around six to seven. I didn't really expect that many running by running backs to go off the board before the number one wide receiver came off the board. And there we have the second chief off the board goes to White Joe three oh five going Tyreek Hill. So Tyreek Hill is off the board, and then followed by Austin Eckler going to Nick at pick number 11. And now we have Landers on the clock, who just selected Aaron Jones to round out the first round, followed by Nick Chubb. So he goes back-to-back -back running backs, ending round one and starting round two. And now we're back to Nick on the clock for pick number two of round two. So it looks like we are only missing one person for this draft, and that's Brooks and Dungey. Hopefully they get, on the, uh, get logged in here soon. Nick goes with Najee Harris, and that had to kill him considering he is a Ravens fan. Taking Najee Harris in the second round had to absolutely be a gut punch to Nick. Now we have Whitecho 305 on the board for their second pick. Third pick of round two is up right now. Got about a minute left on the pick. Each pick is only a minute and a half long, so we tend to fly through these pretty quick. Drafts one and drafts two went rather quick. I was I was pretty pretty impressed with how people were picking. And Antonio Gibson comes off the board to White Show 305. Running backs are coming off in flurries. Which means we're going to see a run on wide receivers as Stefan Digg goes off the board to Rigo Smoke Shack, followed by Calvin Ridley to Pocket Rocket, and DeAndre Hopkins going to Brooks and Dungey. Now the Honolulu Sharks are on the board with pick number 19, second round pick. Followed by Team Shield and then yours truly. And there is still tons of top tier talent on the board. You look at those look at that list that's sitting there available. This is this is not sorted. 
DK Metcalf, AJ Brown, and Justin Jefferson. So no matter what pick you are between Sharks and me, you're going to get one of those three. That's pretty damn impressive. And one thing I tell people all the time, be watching your bye weeks. That's one thing that I break down at the end of every draft is people's bye weeks and how, they, how they're going to be able to handle it. So make sure you stay tuned after this draft. We will be uh, doing the normal episode of Sports Stuff Hub Live a little bit later, which will be a condensed version. But we will be talking predictions for the NFL. And it looks like Sharks is going to time out. They got 10 seconds left. Honolulu Sharks in trouble. And DK Metcalf goes off the board, which would have been the auto pick anyways. Team Shield on the board. Shield making their second pick of A.J. Brown, which then lets Justin Jefferson fall into my hands. Dare we? Dare we go Justin Jefferson? I think we will. I have Justin Jefferson slated to be a top 10 wide receiver here. So now that puts Derrick Henry and Justin, Je Justin Jefferson in my ball game, and I'm all for that. We have, I'm sorry, I don't have my team names up. Unsportsmanlike conduct with just three picks left. And unsportsmanlike conduct goes Terry, scary Terry McLaurin, followed by Clyde Edwards Zellair going to Team Winkfield, Vegas Winkfield. And now Isaiah Mata is up. Bye weeks is important when it comes to your flex position, your wide receivers, and your running backs. If you're not somebody that carries depth on your on your team for quarterback, kicker, um, defense, it can hurt you if you tend to run lean uh, with those guys because then you're going to have to drop one of your potential swap ins and outs at wide receiver, or running back. I'm one person that watches other people's bye weeks. I, I watch my competition's bye weeks because if they have a guy that they have to drop that is putting up points and they've been riding those that, that, that player being in and out, if that's potential upgrade on my bench, I'm taking their guy. And Mata goes Keenan Allen, Chargers wide receiver, and now he's back on the clock to start round three. And Isaiah goes Chris Carson, the running back out of Seattle. And Patrick Mahomes is the first quarterback off the board to Vegas Winkfield in the third round. And now we have unsportsmanlike conduct on the board. On the clock with a minute left. And then, there you go, James Robinson goes off the board. And I'm going tight end, because as one thing I have said for a long time, I'm taking George Kittle, tight end out of San Fran, and then Miles Schild goes Joe Mixon out of Cincinnati. And one thing I've said about the tight end position, there's a drastic drop-off outside of the top three, top four-ish. And so if you can get one of those elite tight ends, a.k.a. a Travis Kelsey, a George Kittle, a Darren Waller, do it. Because outside of that, the next four to eight range, to maybe even number to number 10, they're pretty interchangeable. But Kelsey, Kittle, Waller, they're like receivers. They're catching seven passes a game on average because they're hitting that that 80 to 110 receptions so that's like putting another wide receiver at volume on your team so that's why i always say if you can get the elite of the elite tight ends do it it doesn't matter if one two or third round go for it correct as miles just said 
and then a huge drop. Now, I do believe, and because I'm a tight end, I will not now say, um, I do believe that we're going to see that gap close a little bit this year with the um, introduction of Kyle Pitts to the league. And there we go. Speaking of tight ends, Darren Waller goes to the Honolulu Sharks, followed by Alvin Ro or Alan Robinson going to Brooks and Dungy. And now we have Pocket Rocket back up on the board. Who goes Miles Sanders, running back out of Philly. Rigo's Smoke Shack is now up. Back to what I was saying about um, the tight end gap that's going to be, I believe, closing this year with Kyle Pitts coming aboard. I, you know, I have a hard time putting a rookie at an elite status, but just his skill set makes him very um, friendly to to uh, fantasy football, especially. I mean, Atlanta may not win a lot of games, but Kyle Pitts is a stud, and if he does what I think he could potentially do, then he could be in that four gap. I also believe that T.J. Hawkinson is going to be a safety blanket for Jared Goff. And a couple of spots coming off the board. Rigo Smoke Shack goes wide receiver with C.D. Lamb out of Dallas. Team White Show 305 goes DeAndre Swift, running back out of Detroit. Amari Cooper goes to Team Radzlowski, uh, Dallas wide receiver. Da uh, David Montgomery goes to Team Landers, uh, as well as Robert Woods, wide receiver out of the L.A. Rams. And Radzlowski is now back on the board as we are into round four. Um, but I do believe that we are going to see some of that gap close. Tight ends are becoming more, more, more and more vital to teams, and more teams are going to be using them more. Um, it, it's just like if Eric Ebron didn't have the drops issues that he had, I think Eric, Eric Ebron would have been a, a better tight end for fantasy over the last few years. And I'm not just talking about him in, in, in Pittsburgh, but <clears throat> his time in Detroit um, and, and so on and so forth. But then also uh, a guy like Pat Fryermuth out of Pittsburgh. I think he's going to end up being a Heath Miller-esque, but I don't think he's going to quite be that top five type range. I think he's going to be more in that uh, five to ten range where he's going to be one of those interchangeable guys very early in his career. Mike Evans off the board to teams, Team Radzlowski in the fourth round. White Show 305 is on the clock now. Um, going in on Henry, I, you know what? He hasn't really been hurt, though, the last two years. He he had some injuries early in his career, but the last two years, they used the crap out of him, and he hasn't really, I mean, it, it hasn't it hasn't affected him. Last year, he missed a half of a game. The year before that, he missed one game, I think. So, I mean, as far as injury-wise, I'm okay with it. My fear more is that they have a new offensive coordinator. Um, they have a new wide receiver toy to play with, and I think that they might, not be an 85% or 80% run the ball type team. I think they might drop down to a 70%. Um, I, I don't necessarily know if it's going to be, um, I don't necessarily know if it's going to be a, you know, 400 touches for Derrick Henry. Now the, the, the downside to Derrick Henry is he's not involved in the passing game. And so you don't get PPR. And that's one thing that I had to really take into consideration was where he was going to be, uh, comparative wise to guys getting PPR at pick number four. Brandon Ayuk off the board to Team White Show 305. Puts Rigo's Smoke Shack up on the clock with about 20 seconds left. <clears throat> After this round, I'll start going through the team, the different teams. I can start looking at uh, evaluating each team's draft process so far. Yeah, I, I think he's gonna I think Derrick Henry Derrick Henry will be just fine. Josh Jacobs off the board to Rigo's smoke shack. Speaking of a guy that I'm more uh, concerned about with his workload would be Josh Jacobs because he's gonna come out of the passing game a little bit with Kenyon Drake coming aboard. That's gonna put Kenyon Drake in on passing downs, and so that's gonna kinda negatively impact Josh Jacobs' usage. So I would be more concerned with a Josh Jacobs usage versus a Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry's still gonna hit you Probably 1,400 yards and a dozen touchdowns. And now we have another quarterback off the board to Pocket Rocket. Josh Allen, followed by Adam Thielen going to Brooks and Dungy. <clears throat> now we have the Honolulu Sharks up on the board, followed by Team Shield. And then yours truly again. And we have a 
top setup again that's very wide receiver heavy for who's left. This should go to show what running backs came off the board early. So we have literally the next top picks six are wide receivers. Seven are wide receivers with Lockett, Godwin, Cup, Deontay Johnson, Julio Jones, DJ Moore, T. Higgins. So it's very top heavy with wide receivers. In order to get running back depth, you've got to start digging deeper. You also have to start looking at the potential sleepers and who's going to be a potential star. And Javante Williams, a name that I was actually just eyeing up in my head, just came off the board to the Honolulu Sharks. Yes, David, I am on the. I am in this league. I am Team Samuelson. Uh, pick number forty-five, about to come after Miles. And the one thing that concerns me is now Gus Edwards. All the people that chased Gus Edwards over the last few days with the injury to J.K. Dobbins and then Justice Hill for the Ravens, Gus Edwards was looked at potentially being the bell cow back, and now they signed Le'Veon Bell. And with signing Le'Veon Bell, now granted he's on the practice squad, but Le'Veon Bell gets better the more usage he gets. Tyler Lockett off the board to Team Shield. And now that puts me on the board. So here's what I'm going to be looking at here. I've got Derrick Henry, I've got Justin Jefferson, and i got George Kittle. Where do I go from here? Do I take another receiver, or should I hit that running back spot? <clears throat> Just because of the depth at wide receiver that I see this year, I think it would be smart in round four for me to stick, uh, to stick running back. Now, the question is going to be, where am I going with running back? Because we're kind of out of the top guys that are available, obviously. So I'm going to take this, and I'm going to change this over to, if I can get this changed over, because this is running kind of slow for me. I'm going to change this over to running backs. So if you guys notice here, we have some options. We have a Damian Harris. We have uh, Raheem Mostert. And these guys are falling out of the top here. A Leonard Fournette, a James Conner, Melvin Gordon, A.J. Dillon, you know, some of these guys are going to be backups. What we're going to end up doing here, and just because uh, it, this is going to be a PPR league, I'm actually going to go with Chase Edmonds here. And this is purely for the PPR aspect because he's a receiving back. James Conner got signed to Arizona, and I know James Conner can catch the ball. James Conner can run the ball. But James Conner has been oft injured over the last few years. So I'm going to try to be... The guy, the, the guy taking Edmonds as a safety blanket because he's going to see the field with Connor in action, but he's also going to be getting the majority of the runs while Connor is hurt, if Connor gets hurt this year. Cooper Cup comes off the board to Unsportsmanlike Conduct, followed by Julio going to Vegas Wingfield. Zeus, I was, gonna, I was thinking about Gus Edwards. The problem that I see with Gus Edwards is that I don't believe he's going to end up being the bell cow. And I think that once they get Le'Veon Bell up there, yes, Le'Veon Bell is not what he used to be, but I think they're going to end up running him a fair amount to try to see if he can fit, which is going to take away from Gus Edwards for a few games at least. Gus Edwards isn't a bad running back, but the fact that they're actively finding, looking for more running backs to bring in to be a starting caliber running back tells me they don't believe in Gus Edwards. I thought about Kareem Hunt as well. The problem with Kareem Hunt is that he's in a timeshare as well. Nick Chubb is the guy there. And so Hunt, you know, his his success is based off of spelling Nick Chubb. Miles Gaskin comes in at uh, pick number 48. Round 4, pick 12, going to Team Mata. And now Mata starts off round 5 for us. And Gaskin was another guy I was looking at. Pitts now comes off the board to Mata. So let's take a look while we're going through this. Let's take a look at Team Mata. Christian McCaffrey, Carson, uh, Chris Carson, Keenan Allen, Kyle Pitts, and then he put Miles Gaskin in his flex. DJ Moore just came off the board to Vegas Winkfield. And now we have Condra, uh, ah, I can never remember, unsportsmanlike conduct, sorry. I keep thinking conduct det detrimental to the team. Unsportsmanlike conduct uh, goes with Gus Edwards. So I got to switch over to mine here real quick. So we're at Derrick Henry and Chase Edmonds with Justin Jefferson and George Kittle. So because I don't really feel like drafting a quarterback right now, I'm going to switch this over to wide receiver. And a couple of guys that I think are going to have big years this year would be a pair of 
Denver receivers, number one being Jerry Judy. And I actually value Jerry Judy over Cortland Sutton. And I'm actually going to take Jerry Judy over Cortland Sutton right now. And I know what you're saying. Odell Beckham Jr. was on the board. That's all fine and good. And I have no problems with Odell Beckham Jr. But I was also looking at Derrick Henry being my week 13 and Odell. Losing two big names like that, losing two key contributors to my points would be too much for me in week 13. So I went with a smarter play in my opinion for that week. That era would be Jerry Judy being a week 11 buy, which I have no week 11 buys currently. And then Mike Davis comes off the board to Team Shield. So let's take a look at Miles' roster while we are going through stuff right now. Joe Mixon, Mike Davis, and uh, A.J. Brown, Tyler Lockett, and Travis Kelsey. Kelsey being his first round pick. Pretty solid pair of running backs right there, paired with a very solid trio of pass catchers between wide receivers and tight end. Anytime you can put Travis Kelsey on a roster with Lockett and A.J. Brown, I don't think you're going to have any issues with PPR leagues. Damian Harris off the board to Honolulu Sharks, followed by Kareem Hunt going to Brooks and Dungy in the auto pick. You know, and since we have an auto pick up, let's take a look at the auto pick team. Saquon Barkley, first round pick. Kareem Hunt, DeAndre Hopkins, Allen Robinson, and Adam Thielen in the flex position. That's actually a pretty damn solid lineup for an auto pick team. Are we sure that's an auto pick team? We had an auto pick team go in division one, I believe. And I felt so bad for it because the, the team ended up with an entire bench of wide receivers because it auto drafted obviously the top picks and wide receivers were sitting at the top the entire time and it took forever for it to actually draft the quarterback and the kicker well actually the kicker didn't matter but the the quarterback and the um um the 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 defense it all got drafted at the end because it was it kept auto filling to the wide receiver and you can put eight wide receivers on a team and i felt so bad for this because it just it just went load heavy on wide receivers Deontay Johnson off to Team Pocket Rocket. Now, I'm going to say this. I'm Obviously, I'm a Steelers fan. A lot of you guys know that. <clears throat> Deontay Johnson is a very undervalued wide receiver right now. And if Ben comes back to even a, a, a slight bit to what he could have or what, what he's been in the past, Deontay is going to be a stud. Now, Chase Claypool, I truly believe, should be the number one receiver there with Juju as the slot and Deontay as the three with James Washington's um, uh, in, in four receiver sets. And that would make for a dangerous, dangerous, dangerous team. Um, I honestly believe that Chase, Clay, Chase Claypool needs to be the true number one because he's really the most dynamic playmaker they have in their wide receiver set. T. Higgins now off the board to Rigo's Smoke Shack. And T. Higgins, part of a uh, very questioned wide receiver core for Cincinnati last season, now joined by a uh, somewhat doubted Jamar Chase now after he's struggled in the preseason with catching the ball. Mark Andrews off the board to uh, Winchell 305, followed by Lamb Jack, my pick to be the fantasy football leading scoring leading scorer at quarterback uh, going to Radzlowski. So we are almost out of round five with Team Landers picking to end round five and then start round six. And while Landers is making their selection, Here's a look at their roster so far. Aaron Jones, Nick Chubb at running backs with Robert Woods and then Cortland Sutton now selected at wide receiver with David Montgomery at the flex and Chris Godwin just picked up for the bench uh, for, for their bench already. I think that might be the first bench spot drafted.
TJ Hawkinson now off the board to Team Radzlowski as he gets one of the other good uh, top, we'll call it, tight ends left in the league. And now we've got White Show 305 on the board, followed by Rigo Smoke Shack and Pocket Rocket here in round six. Uh, Sir Bongzala says, Claypool early year drops, hope he can overcome it. I think he will. Uh, the kid's got enough moxie and enough swag, and he's got enough uh, talent that I, I don't believe that drops are ever going to be something that holds him back. <clears throat> and now we have another quarterback coming off the board. White Show 305 goes Kyler Murray, quarterback for AZ, another mobile quarterback who we could definitely see put up a lot of points with his legs as well. It'll be interesting how Arizona fares this year in a very, very tough, loaded NFC West. Daryl Henderson, running back for the Rams, goes to Rigo Smoke Shack, followed by Mike Jacecki to Pocket Rocket, and Dak Prescott going to the Dubville, Brooks, and Dungy. Honolulu Sharks on the board, followed by Team Shield, and then back to me with pick number 69 overall in round six. <clears throat> the Steelers in general had an overall dr uh, high drop rate last year. Deontay struggled. Deontay had, what was it, seven drops over two weeks or, or, or eight drops over two weeks or whatever it was. So I, I don't necessarily know if I put that so much on Claypool. I think that was a whole mental thing there that their receivers had. Juju had some uncharacteristic drops. Um, James Washington dropped a couple of wide opens. Deontay dropped too many. Chase Claypool dropped a few. Um, their, their running backs were dropping the ball. I mean, it, there was a lot of Ben's incompletions last year were on his receivers. Raheem Mostert goes to the Honolulu Sharks, running back out of San Fran, who may not be the starting running back for too long if Trey Sermon ends up as good as advertised. Yeah, Chris Godwin. The, the, the problem that I see with Tampa Bay is they have too much talent at pass catchers. They have Godwin, a, uh, Antonio Brown, Mike Evans, and Gronk. <clears throat> And I think that could be tough to spread the ball out to all of them. I actually think that uh, Antonio Brown's going to have a good season this year, which is going to take away from uh, guys like Godwin and Mike Evans. <laughs> all right, Shield took Brandon Cooks, which puts me back on the board. And I have a flex position to fill question becomes where do I want to fill that flex position now here's where I did not expect Odell Beckham Jr. to be available uh, around after I selected Jerry Judy over him so here's now my conundrum taking Odell Beckham Jr. to flex position three years ago would have sounded like a wet dream now I have the question of do I want to go with Odell Beckham Jr. or do I take a chance on a LaVisca Chenault or even a Chase Claypool? My problem with Odell is that I don't know how the team chemistry is going to go for the Browns with him. <clears throat> the only stealer I'm really eyeing here is Chase Claypool. But because of the week 13... I, w I stayed away from Odell Beckham Jr. before. But in a flex position, I think I can go with him because I'm going to be in my flex anyways. So I'm going to take OBJ here in a flex position. Quick, make your pick. Again, three weeks or three years ago, OBJ in a, in a flex position, every fantasy football player's wet dream. Tom Brady comes off the board now to unsportsmanlike conduct as we're starting to get more quarterbacks coming off the board here by round six. Catching up to some of the comments here. Uh, we have Brady likes Brown. Absolutely. Steelers have the coolest wide receiver core, uh, says Zeus. Um, got him in the pats and the backs. The bucks, I'm assuming that meant. 
Uh, somebody says, take Odell. I did. Thank you for the uh, thank you for the support. It's Baker's contract year. He's going to sling it. Well, he was slinging it last year, too, but I 100% agree with that. I do believe that, uh, that uh, Baker Mayfield is going to be passing that ball around. Kenyon Drake off the board to Vegas Winkfield, the backup running back with so a split time running back for the Raiders. Russ Wilson off the board to Team Mata, followed by Justin Herbert. Also, so back to back quarterbacks, ending round six and starting round seven. <clears throat> so he goes two quarterbacks. Juju comes off the board to Vegas Winkfield. And now we have unsportsmanlike conduct up in round seven. And I'll get to that roster as soon as they make their selection and then I'm able to make mine. So we can look over unsportsmanlike conduct who is drafting right before me was the number three overall pick. And I tend to stay away from quarterbacks until at least round seven. And honestly, I just, I don't think I'm going to go quarterback quite yet. I don't think. Now, maybe I will, because if you look at quarterbacks available, Aaron Rodgers, who led all quarterbacks in fantasy points last year, sitting right there. How do you say no to Aaron Rodgers? Do you take Aaron Rodgers in round seven? This goes against, for the most part, what I would do, except when Aaron Rodgers falls at that spot. And Ronald Jones comes off the board to unsportsmanlike conduct. Now the question becomes, do I actually take Aaron Rodgers here? Or do I wait and take the chance on a Baker Mayfield later in the draft, or maybe even Jalen Hurts later in the draft. Decisions, decisions. You know, I didn't have Aaron Rodgers in my top five. I really didn't. And probably blew on me for that. But let me take a look at who's available at running back. Maybe I can get a little depth here. Sony Michelle, who just went over to the Rams. Leonard Fournette splits time. James Conner is going to be splitting time. Melvin Gordon is going to be splitting time. A.J. Dillon is the backup. Jamal Williams is going to be splitting time. Zach Moss and Devin Singletary are sitting right there. Quick, make your pick. You know what? I'm going to go LaVisca. Never mind, it auto-drafted for me. Kenny Galladay. Apparently my computer has a little bit of lag. Kenny Galladay for the Giants. So I spent too much time trying to switch around because my computer is right now because I am running the streaming software. <clears throat> and then Aaron Rodgers goes, <laughs> you are welcome, Miles. I was thinking about going for him, and it, uh, it, it wasn't going that way. I'm fine with Kenny Galladay right there. It actually doesn't bother me. Um, I'm, I, I want some depth at wide receiver so I can make some changes around, especially with a receiver that I don't have a bye week for yet and he was a top-ranked wide receiver that was left. And I think Kenny Galladay is going to pair well in the Giants offense. Kenny G was a good receiver for Detroit. Detroit just had a bad team. Now, the Giants aren't exactly aren't exactly a, a massive upgrade, but I think Kenny G is going to see some time, and he's going to see some, uh, some throws his way because there's not exactly a tremendous amount of talent for the Giants. Now, I know that they did draft... Um, Kadarius Tony, but who knows how that's gonna how that's gonna translate yet? 
And then we got a, a run of players off the board after Aaron Rodgers went to Miles. We have Honolulu Sharks went with Jalen Hurts. Logan Thomas to Brooks and Dungey. Sony Michelle off the board to Pocket Rocket. Noah Fant goes to Riggo's Smoke Shack. Chenault then goes to Whitechill 305. After I was going to try to grab him in the last round, but I got auto screwed <laughs> out of that. And for some reason, now it's got me set on an auto pick. Because, oh, because I let the timer go. <clears throat> so, that just goes to show I need to make sure that I make my pick with at least 10 seconds to go. Because my clock was still showing, uh, from what I could see anyways, it was showing uh, um, that I had some seconds left when I changed over and hit draft. Um, but, oh well. I'm not too concerned about it. Like I said, I've got my main wide receivers set. And Kenny Galladay is not a bad depth to your bench. So while we are moving through other teams, we have Anderson going off the board to Radzlowski. Naheem Himes going to uh, Lee Landers, who is then going to start the next round. We are already starting round eight now. Taking a look at Unspeak Conduct's roster. See what you guys think about this. Tom Brady in at quarterback. Alvin Kamara, the number two. James Robinson at running back. Terry McLaurin and Cooper Cup at wide receiver with Gus Edwards in the flex position with Ronald Jones sitting on the bench. Not too shabby of a roster. The downside that I'm seeing three players sitting there all with the same bye week, and that would be Brady, uh, Ronald Jones, and McLaurin. And if McLaren ends up being as good as what I think he could be, if you're missing Brady and McLaren in the same week, that's a lot of fantasy points to be given up. You're also then going to be missing Ronald Jones. There's a flex position gone for you if need be as well. Chase Claypool off the board to Landers to start round eight. And now we put Radzlocki back on the board. Yeah, I am having a little bit of lag. I'm not going to argue that. It's I've got a little bit because I'm I'm not only running the the draft software, but I'm also running the uh, streaming software. So um, I, I figured I was going to have a little bit of choppiness. I just didn't think I was going to be hurt by it. But that's also on me for not um, for not making my pick as early as I should have. So, unsportsmanlike conducts roster. So, we just saw James Conner go off the board to Radzlowski. And let's take a look at Vegas Winkfield's roster while we're waiting for the next round of picks to go. Patrick Mahomes in at quarterback. Dalvin Cook, the number three overall pick. Or was it? Yeah, it was number three overall. Or no, number two overall. Cook went two. That's right. Kamara went three. Melvin Gordon off the board to Winchill 305. And we're just a couple picks away from being back up again with Rigo Smoke Shack on the board right now. Patrick Mahomes in at quarterback for Winkfield. Dalvin Cook, the number two overall pick. Clyde Edwards Elaire is the second running back who people are bouncing back season. Uh, at wide receivers, we have Jones and Moore, who both have the same bye week, and that could be dangerous. Kenyon Drake in at running back for the flex position, and then Juju sitting on the bench. A couple picks came off just now. We have Melvin Gordon, five, then Will Fuller to Riggo's Smoke Shack, Michael Thomas to Pocket Rocket, and Jamar Chase, Brooks, and Dungy. Greg says, damn you all for making me take Chase Claypool. <clears throat> I can see it now. Greg shakes his his fist at the skies. Damn you all. Damn you all. Honolulu Sharks. Board. Smith for the, the Sharks. Now, I'm going to let you guys get a peek at this since we're in round eight. <clears throat> Let's take a look at who is on the board. At the quarterback position. Ryan Tannehill, who I have said that I expect him to have a very good season. <clears throat> and while we're looking at this, you guys can look at Rigo's Smoke Shack roster. Matthew Stafford, who could go this season in a, a better system than he's ever had in Detroit. With a better supporting cast. 
Joe Burrow coming off an ACL injury. Baker Mayfield in a contract year. Tua with a revamped offense. Rookie Trevor Lawrence, who has been the dubbed the second coming, the savior of the NFL since he was 14 freaking years old. Matt Ryan with some new toys to throw to. Michael Gallup goes off the board to Team Shield. Now the question is, do I go quarterback here? And I know we were talking about, do I go quarterback here? I don't think with who's left on the board. I considered Aaron Rodgers in round seven, and I don't think I want to go that route. Because Aaron Rodgers, potentially. But I think at this point, I almost have to go with somebody that I think is going to be seeing the ball a little bit more on for some depth at my positions here. So I've got two running backs on my roster. I've got three wide receivers, excuse me, four wide receivers on my roster. I kind of feel like I have to go running back in this position just so that I can make sure I have some depth. And right now there's not a single running back off the board for Buffalo. Buffalo's got a very potent offense. So if I go anywhere, I think I'm going to take Zach Moss here because he seems to be the one who's going to see the more PPR value. So I'm going to take Zach Moss. And that puts me at a running back and a wide receiver that I can run in through uh, along with Odell Beckham Jr. in at my flex position if need be. Week 7, which is typically a no-no for me. But with this kind of depth, I think I'm going to be safe. Now, next round is coming up very quickly. So maybe, maybe I go quarterback. And we see Tyler Boyd come off the board for unsportsmanlike conduct. So maybe we go quarterback in round eight. Maybe. Let's see if anybody else takes any. We have Ryan Tannehill now off the Vegas Winch, uh, Vegas Winkfield. So Tannehill's now off the board, who again, I thought my preseason prediction was that Ryan Tannehill's going to lead in passing to touchdowns. So Kim Graham in round eight is a very solid, very solid value. Another guy that I think has massive, massive ceiling is Tua. Jalen Hurts already came off the board who went after round 10 in a lot of leagues. And now Jalen Hurts is already on the board. Tua was kind of my number two for a very late rounder that could have a very high ceiling as well. Mata is up on the board right now, and he's going to end round eight and start round nine of this snake draft. And since he's got back-to-back -back picks, let's just throw him up on the screen right now. So he's got Russell Wilson, Christian McCaffrey, Chris Carson, Keenan Allen, Kyle Pitts, Miles Gaskin, and backup quarterback Justin Herbert. So he goes wide receiver for the Jets, new wide receiver receiver for the new quarterback Zach Wilson and Corey Davis and Corey Davis was a stud last year in fantasy when he was actually on the field for Tennessee the question is are they going to get the same production out of him in New York and now Jalen Waddle comes off the board for the Miami Dolphins wide receiver Winkfield is now back up and I'm going to load my team so that I'm ready to go Winkfield is up with Unsportsmanlike conduct at pick number uh, pick number three of round nine, and then me at pick number one hundred. <clears throat> and just looking at my roster: Derrick Henry, Chase Edmonds, Justin Jefferson, Jerry Judy, George Kittle, Odell Beckham Jr., Kenny Galladay, and Zach Moss. Bad roster. I like that. It gives me some variety. It gives me some play. And there's a lot of potential there. So, yeah, I'm going to take that. Curtis Samuel off the board to Vegas Winf Winkfield, which puts unsportsmanlike conduct up right before me. It doesn't like conduct to who I'm looking at. Maybe, maybe not.
Devin Singletary, running back for the Bills. Now, I didn't switch over to this for this exact reason. Just trying and trying to understand or trying to see where I'm going to go. I wanted to see where the defense was. And the Buccaneers are sitting there. And the Steelers are sitting there. And I have neither on my roster. So the question becomes then, maybe I take the Bucks at round nine. Which again, something that I rarely do is draft a defense this early. I'm usually more of a streaming defense unless I can get a really good one in round 10 or later. But this just, this just screams, do it. And I'm going to. I'm taking the Buccaneers defense. Nine. And now I have quite a few picks until it's my turn again. I don't pick again until 117. So I've got 17 more to go. But taking the Buccaneers defense was kind of one of those. I don't have any addition right now for the bye week for it. So I have to make sure that I have it. Normally I draft depth at my... Um, spot positions such as quarterback, kicker, and defense. That's usually where some of my depth goes. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to do that this year, though. I don't know if I'm going to take a backup defense. I don't know if I'm going to take a backup quarterback. I don't know if I'm going to take a backup kicker. Tight end? Maybe. Depending on who's on the board. Jamal Williams, now the backup running back for the Detroit Lions comes off the board to Team Shield. And we are looking at a fair amount of backup running backs that people are now handcuffing because they want to make sure that if anything happens to a number of them, that they've got them locked and ready to go. And we see Debo Samuel goes to Honolulu Sharks, followed by Marvin Jones Jr., newly acquired wide receiver for the Jacksonville Jaguars, going to Brooks and Dungey. Marquez Callaway, the preseason standout for the New Orleans Saints, goes to Pocket Rocket. A.J. Dillon goes to Rigo's Smoke Shack, and we are moving, people. We are in round nine with just three picks left. Wincho, 305. White Show, 305, takes Trey Sermon. Radzlowski's now on the board. Just two picks left in round nine. Landers is on deck, and Landers is our Marquise Brown to Radzlowski. Landers is on the clock and on deck with Radzlau in the hole. Jonu Smith, tight end out of New England, goes to Landers, followed by Matthew Stafford at quarterback for the Rams. And let's take a look at Lee Landers. Matthew Stafford at quarterback, Aaron Jones. Jones, Robert Wood, Sutton, John Smith, David Montgomery with Godwin, Hines, and Claypool on the bench. Michael put the board to Radzlowski with Michael Carter followed closely behind by Whitecho 305. And while we're down here, let's look at Team Radzlowski. Lamar Jackson, Austin Eckler, Neris, uh, uh, Amar Cooper, Mike Evans, TJ Hawkinson, Robbie Anderson, James Conner on the bench, Marquise Brown and Michael Pittman followed out on the bench as well. And this scares me right here for somebody. Three number sevens right there. Eckler, Harris, and Cooper. All, all three up at those positions, and they all three have the same bye week. That can be scary. Jarvis Landry goes to Rigo's Smoke Shack, a very under-the-radar pick right there as Jarvis Landry is a PPR wet dream. Baker Mayfield now comes off the board as the quarterbacks are becoming quite thin. DJ Chark now to the Brooks and Dungy with the Honolulu Sharks now on the board followed by Team Shield and then and now because we're in round 10 let's look at the quarterbacks. Joe Burrow sitting ranked number one right now and if you look at this Justin Fields is sitting there ranked number 149 
And I believe that's ranked ahead of Andy Dalton because I don't see Andy Dalton on this list and I don't recall Andy Dalton being drafted. Andy Dalton is ranked way down here and Justin Fields is sitting 20 spots ahead of him and Justin is the starting quarterback. Trey Lance, same thing. Lance here, Jimmy Garoppolo is not listed ahead of him. Jimmy Garoppolo is down here in the area. Bizarre. So they're expecting Jimmy Garoppolo to get benched. They're expecting Andy Dalton to get benched. Mike Williams comes off the board to the Honolulu Sharks. And now it's Team Shield up on the board. Take a look at his roster. Aaron Rodgers, Joe Mixon, Mike Davis, A.J. Brown, Tyler Lockett, Travis Kelsey, Brandon Cooks, and on the bench, Michael Gallup and Jamal Williams. Maybe Shield goes depth at quarterback. Maybe. Sorry, I just found out that one of our guys uh, is not in because he thought it was 8 p.m. Pacific. That's not good. That was uh, Brooks and Dungey, I believe. Uh, Henry Ruggs off the board of Team Shield, which then puts a lot of options in my court. Round 10. I, You know, I can get on board with going quarterback in round 10. Now the question is, where do I go quarterback? So looking at my roster, if I go Burrow, I don't have any competing bye weeks that I have to worry about. I could go Tua and have no bye weeks to worry about. I could go Trevor Lawrence and have to worry about Justin Jefferson. You know what? Because I know he can put up a buttload of touchdowns, I'm going to start with Joe Burrow. I'm going to let it roll with the top quarterback available, Joe Burrow. And part of that's because I don't have to worry about screwing around the bye weeks. But I also plan on getting a very good backup quarterback who just in case Burrow has problems getting the ball out, I should have no problem switching over to somebody else. So, and I can guarantee I can get that player later in this draft. Somebody that we haven't looked at in a while, the Honolulu Sharks, Jalen Hurts as starting quarterback with Ezekiel Elliott, Javante Williams at running backs, DK Metcalf, I believe that's Devontae Smith, at receiver Darren Waller at tight end Damian Harris in the flex Mostert Samuel and Williams on and now we have Antonio Brown off the board to unsportsmanlike conduct followed by Jacoby Myers for Vegas Winkfield and it puts team Mata who ends round 10 and starts round 11 of a snake draft Getting a little bit of delay here. Mata, now he goes Robert Tanyan, Big Bob Tanyan. And now he's back up to start round 11. 
And the team that is auto-drafting is Dubville, Brooks, and Dungy. And Prescott, Saquon, Kareem Hunt, D-Hop, Allen Robinson, Logan Thomas, Adelon with Jamar Chase, Marvin Jones, and DJ Chark. And it looks like now we have everybody logged in. And for an auto draft, as I was saying, this is a much better auto draft than we saw uh, in draft. I think league number one, the auto draft that took place was an absolute brutalization for a player. And now we have... Team Ma taking Paris Campbell, injured wide receiver from last year for Indy, who now returns to the lineup and looks to make an impact immediately. Dallas Goddard, Philadelphia tight end, goes to Vegas Winkfield, and it puts unsportsmanlike conduct back on the board with me on deck. So I'm going to get my spot loaded back up here so that I can see where I need to go. comes off the board to welcome to the best day of the year conduct question now is where do i go for depth do i run at wide receiver do i run at running back i've got four wide receivers on my team already i've got three running backs on the team who's going to benefit me the most as a leonard fournette at running back possibly Cole Beasley at wide receiver, because you got Diggs in the Bees. Devontae Parker at wide receiver could be a very good pick. Jalen Regor, who looked fantastic in preseason. David Johnson, that I don't know if I want to touch him. James White, potentially is going to see a lot of timeshare in New England. Tyrell Williams, receiver. I have a problem trusting that. Miko Hardman. Oh, man. You know, I'm kind of thinking that I'm going to go Jalen Regor here. And we're going to go here because I, I believe Hurts is going to have a big year. Jalen Regor is going to be a big part of that. So I'm going to go Regor here. I'm very high on Jalen Regor. I think he's going to outplay not only his ADP, but I think he'll outplay his projections this year puts Team Shield back on the board. As he the backup running back for Dallas. Now Honolulu Sharks is and we are in round 11 of a 14 round draft. Let's take a look at some other people's rosters, shall we? Win uh, White Show 305, that I don't believe we've looked at his roster yet today. Kyler Murray in at quarterback with Antonio Gibson and DeAndre Swift. What a pairing, even though both of his wide uh, running backs are on the same bye week. Tyreek Hill and Brandon Ayuk at wide receivers. Mark Andrews at tight end. LaVisca Chenault at the flex position with Melvin Gordon, Trey Sermon, and Michael Carter on the bench. Three running backs in depth. Tua off the board to the Honolulu Sharks. Let's take a look at the Honolulu Sharks. Who takes Tua. That is the same bye week as their starting quarterback. That's dangerous. Because you just pinned yourself with Devontae Smith and Damian Harris with both your quarterbacks. The same bye weeks. That I don't think he intended to have happen. <laughs> don't believe that that was supposed to happen. And we put.
put Brooks and Dungy up on the board who takes the Washington defense. Rigo's Smoke Shack is now on the board after Pocket Rocket takes Tony Jones Jr. Running back for the Saints. Putting a handcuff on the backup to Alvin Kamara. And let's take a look at the Pocket Rocket roster that I don't believe we have looked at yet. Josh Allen at quarterback. Jonathan Taylor and Miles Sanders also sharing the same bye week that could be dangerous with Mike Jacecki in at tight end with the same bye week. Calvin Ridley and Deontay Johnson are the wide with Sony Michelle in the flex position. Michael Thomas, Callaway, Baker Mayfield, and Mr. Tony Jones Jr. are on the bench. All uh, three of the four have the same bye week along with Calvin Ridley at week six. So I'm seeing here in this league, we're having less people paying attention to their bye weeks or just not caring about their bye weeks, which can destroy a roster. Let's now look at Radzlowski, Lamar Jack, Jackie Harris, Amari Cooper, Mike Evans, TJ Hawkinson, Robbie Anderson, James Conner, uh, Marcus Brown, and Michael Pittman Jr. I think we just looked at his not that long ago. Who have not, we not looked at in a while? Winkfield? Just looked at hers a little while ago. Mr. Mata. And we have Leonard Fournette now off the board of Rigo Smoke Shack. Uh, Rigo Smoke Shack. White Chill 305 goes David Johnson at running back. Radzlowski to backup running back Tyson Williams. Lee Landers goes Buffalo defense with a back-to-back -back pick of Alexander Madison, the backup running back for Minnesota. Team Mata. Looking at Russell Wilson, Christian McCaffrey, Chris Carson, Keenan Allen, Corey Davis, Kyle Pitts, Miles Gaskin, Justin Herbert, Jalen Waddell, Robert Tanyan, and Paris Campbell. Now we have the Steelers defense off the board to Radzlowski, Cole Beasley to White Joe 305, Trevor Lawrence now to Rigo's Smoke Shack, Pocket Rock, John Edwards, and now Brooks and Dungy. Sharks on deck, shield in the hole. And we're going to pull my roster back up as I prepare for my next pick. So we have kicker available, which I usually don't pick a kicker until the last pick in the draft. Uh, Darnell Mooney goes to Brooks and Dungy with the Broncos defense going to the Honolulu Sharks. I have two bench spots. <clears throat> the question now becomes, do I go more depth at running back, which there's not a lot left on the board. Because Philip Lindsay is now over with Houston, J.D. McKissick, Malcolm Brown, and now I'm on the clock after Matt Ryan is selected by Team Shield. Or maybe I go a Gronk for depth at tight end. Who's on the board for the quarterback position? Do I go quarterback and make sure I get the guy that I want? Yeah, I don't think I'm going to yet. I'm going to wait. But what I do think I am going to do is I'm going to take a backup tight end. And I know you guys are going to say I'm probably crazy. And I probably am. But I'm going to go Gronk. I have a feeling Gronk is going to have a very good fantasy year this year. And I see almost flex worthy at points, especially in some of my bye week issues. It's just a gut feeling I have. <clears throat> I could have gone Justin Fields because I believe that he'll be starting by week three. 
I'm not comfortable going with Trey Lance right now, even though I love Trey Lance. I'm a big Trey Lance supporter. I don't believe he's going to be starting prior to week six unless Jimmy Garoppolo gets hurt or unless Jimmy Garoppolo just absolutely implodes, and I don't think he's going to. Tyler Higby goes to unsportsmanlike conduct. We are in round 12. We are two picks away from finishing round 12. Which means 13 and 14 about to be underway. And that means round 14 coming up soon, the kicker round. So we'll end up finishing this draft roughly about by the looks of it. And then we'll roll right into Sports Stuff Hub Live at that point. Okay, I was worried that my screen froze a second. Devontae Parker goes to Vegas Winkfield. I was actually nervous that my screen froze. It was not. My stuff is has slowed way down. This draft has bogged down my computer. Because I'm running both the software and the draft, and it is warm in this room. Justin Tucker goes to Team Mata along with the Seahawks defense, followed by Vegas Winkfield taking the 49ers defense. Person like Hong takes Terrace Marshall Jr. And now I'm on the clock for my 13th pick, my last And the question is now, what do I take? <clears throat> One person that I think is going to be a breakout player this year. And he's on a team that usually is their running backs. But I'm going to take Ramondre Stevenson, rookie running back, out of New England. And... This boils down to the fact that he was an absolute banger in preseason. And I think he's been under the radar. And he's going to change some people's views on some things for the rookie running back class. I think he's going to be a sleeper this year. So, Ramondre Stevenson. Followed by Team Shield taking his Kansas City kicker, Harrison Butker. Honolulu Sharks is on the board with their 13th round pick, followed by Brooks and Dungey, Team Rocket. Rigo Smoke Shack has switched over to auto picking. White Joe 305, Radzlowski, and Landers rounding out 13, and then the kicker round begins. Elijah Moore off the board to Honolulu Sharks, followed by Matt Gay, kicker for the Rams, to Brooks and Dungey. Dolphins defense to Pocket Rocket, followed by Rams defense to Rigo's Smoke Shack. White Joe's Patriots defense. Razlowski on the board already has his defense. So he will not be going defense. He may go kicker. As you see on the screen, the kicker. He goes Lev Bell, newly signed running back for Ravens. J.D. McKissick off the board to Landers. Now Landers begins the final round and goes Jason Meyer, kicker. Rads is back up. 
and goes Greg the Leg Zerline, Dallas kicker. White Joe 305. Now up. And goes Brandon McManus, Denver kicker, followed by Graham Gano to Rigo's Smoke Shack from the Giants. Team Pocket Rocket on the board with Brooks and Dungey and Honolulu Sharks. Pocket Rocket goes Jason Sanders, Dolphins kicker. Brooks and Dungey goes James White, New England running back. The Sharks goes Young Ho Koo. For Atlanta kicker, shield on the board. And he's already got his kicker. Maybe he goes depth at kicker. Or maybe he just goes depth at kicker. Brown's defense for Team Shield. And I'm going to go with Tyler Bass, kicker out of Buffalo. Because Buffalo, I believe, is going to put up a lot of points this year. And then Miles instantly regrets picking the Browns defense because they play the Chiefs this year. It's just one game, though, Miles. You should be safe. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Winkfield and Mata for the last picks in this draft. And then we're going to get right into a review of all teams. McLaughlin, Cleveland kicker, goes to unsportsmanlike conduct. Winkfield is on is up now on the clock with Team Mata. Winkfield goes Lambo, Josh Lambo, Jacksonville kicker, and Team Mata to end the draft. And that's it. And I will name my team later, but we're going to do a recap now, which we can go through this a little bit quicker because we kind of did it, most of it already. All right, so pick number one went to Isaiah Mata, Team Mata, who took Christian McCaffrey one overall. <clears throat> now, if we're looking at this roster, Russell Wilson, Christian McCaffrey, Chris Carson at running back, Keenan Allen and Corey Davis at receiver, Kyle Pitts at tight end with Miles Gaskin in the flex position. Seahawks defense, Justin Tucker at kicker, Justin Herbert, Jalen Waddle, Onion, Paris Campbell, and Mecole Hardman on the bench. I see some danger here, and that starts with a lot of grouping of the bye weeks. And again, I pay attention because I'm constantly watching who's going to have to drop who. Now you see Russell Wilson, Chris Carson, and Seahawks defense all sitting at week nine. But he's got a backup quarterback. He has no backup defense, though. Which most people don't carry a backup defense during the season unless they have a questionable defense. Now, I may end up dropping if my guys, if a couple of my bench guys don't perform. I may end up dropping my bench guys to pick up a rotating defense if the Bucks aren't scoring me a massive amount of points all season. The other danger zone I see here is that his flex position, Miles Gaskin, and two of his other wide receivers. Jalen Waddle and Paris Campbell are all sitting at week 14 because he's got five wide receivers on his roster that's not have to deal with week 13 only has two uh two conflicting bye weeks not at the same position though but he's got depth at Kyle Pitts and Big Bob Tanyan for the tight end position so overall it looks having to drop somebody to uh, for his kicker and his defense which happens to the best of us happens to almost all of us so there you go team Mata looking overall pretty solid with the bye week positioning moving over to team Winkfield I wish there was a way I could get this up better on the screen so you guys could see it a little bit better Patrick Mahomes in at quarterback with the number two overall pick going Dalvin Cook Clyde Edwards Hilaire in at running back as well. Julio, this is Julio, I believe. Julio and DJ Moore in at wide receivers. Dallas Goddard at tight end. Kenyon Drake running back at the flex position. 49ers defense. Josh Lambeau kicker. Juju on the bench along with Tannehill, Curtis Samuel, Jacoby Myers, and Devontae Parker. Now, I see some good spread of the bye weeks here 
with the only concern being Julio and DJ Moore at your two your two main wide receivers being the same week. But you can put in Myers and Parker, but then, then they have the same. The problem is going to be is if any of your receivers get hurt or problem is if any of your other wide receivers um, aren't producing, may have to change that up. That's the scary part when you have both of your positions on the same bye week. Now, Clyde at home is not that, that big of an issue. We got depth there at Ryan and Hill the following week, bye week. But then also you have Travis, or, uh, uh, Kenyon Drake in the flex that you can roll up into your running back position and throw any wide receiver in there afterwards. Josh Lambeau being a week seven, 49ers defense being will having to drop somebody to pick up uh, to, to get those positions filled. And then as well, no backup tight end. Not surprising. Most people don't carry a backup tight end anyways. So there you go. Pretty good spread. Just the, the main concern being Julio and DJ Moore, your two main wide receivers, losing them at the same time. Unsportsmanlike conduct roster. Third overall pick, Tom Brady in at quarterback with number three overall pick, Alvin Kamara. James Robinson in at running back as well. Terry McLaurin, scary Terry at wide receiver. Cooper Cup, Tyler Higby at tight end, Gus Edwards in a flex, Ravens defense, uh, McLaughlin in at kicker. On the bench is Rojo, Tyler Boyd, Devin Singletary, uh, Antonio Brown, and Terrace Marshall Jr. L looking this over, we've got four week nines, but it's spread out between quarterback, a wide receiver, a backup running back, and a backup wide receiver. So, going to have to do some shifty work here anyways because no backup quarterback, no backup defense, no backup kicker, and no backup tight end. So, there's four positions that are going to need it. It doesn't look like any of those are going to fall in the same week, though. Kicker is 13, defense is 8, tight end is 11, quarterback 9. So, shouldn't have to drop more than one player if everybody else is performing. Not a big deal. Pretty good spread on that one even though four nines on there, but they're in the right spots. A roster you've seen on the screen most of the time here, and I'm going to be overly critical of mine. Joe Burrow in a starting quarterback. Number over number four overall pick, Derrick Henry. Chase Edmonds also in a back. Jamar, uh, excuse me, uh, Justin Jefferson and Jerry Judy in at wide receiver. George Kittle at tight end. Odell Beckham Jr. in the flex. Bron uh, Buccaneers defense, Tyler Bassett, kicker. On the Kenny G, Zach Moss, Jalen Rager, Rob Gronkowski, and Ramondre Stevenson. I, I, I'm in love and in, in hate with my roster all at the same time. And part of this is that, yeah, I could have gone Aaron Rodgers, and that was a snafu on my part. Um, I should have taken Aaron Rodgers at that pick. But honestly, I think Joe Burrow is going to be just fine this year. I didn't go with a backup quarterback after all, after I thought about it. I really want to test depth at wide receiver, tight end, and running back. Rob Gronkowski being ranked where he was, was ridiculous. Rob Gronkowski was a missed part of the season last year and still was a top 12 scoring uh, tight end. So having him down as far as he was ranked to him in my opinion I know Tampa Bay is loaded and it's going to be tough to get the ball spread around but I think he's still going to be that tight end do he's going to be boomer boomer bust he's not he's not the Rob Gronkowski of seven years ago I know that but I've got George Kittle to be that Rob Gronkowski so I just need Gronk to be that tight end on week six and then aside from that he could be trade bait for me I did a pretty good job of making sure I spread out my bye weeks. I have no more than two, I believe. I made sure. No, I do have three. I have a Justin Jefferson on seven, Tyler Bass on seven, and Zach Moss on seven. But again, no backup kicker, so I've got to make that. Uh, Buccaneers defense, no backup defense, and no backup quarterback. So I, I'm going to have to drop some, somebody. And in most likely, uh, Zach Moss or uh, Ramondre Stevenson, depending on how Stevenson's doing. I think Kenny Galladay is going to be a solid backup wide receiver for me. I was a little um, disappointed with my backup or with my number two running back being Chase Edmonds. Um, I think 
Arizona's defense is going to be good, but I, I just I think James Conner is going to be taking enough carries away from Edmonds that I probably screwed up by having Chase Edmonds as my number two. There's a potential that I end up having Zach Moss back compliment to Derrick Henry. OBJ putting in the flex position. Um, again, I passed on him originally to pick up Jerry Judy, and then OBJ fell to me around later, and it was... It was one of those situ actually two rounds later. It was one of those situations where I was blown away. No, it was it was the next round. I was blown away that he was still available. Um, as as Zeus pointed out in chat, Baker's in a contract year, so he's going to be throwing the ball a lot. OBJ also is in prove it mode because without him, the Browns went to the playoffs. The Browns won a playoff game so with him he needs to make sure that they do better <clears throat> so i believe he's going to be in prove it mode this year and i think at a flex position he could go back to what i said during the draft three years ago getting obj in your flex position was a wet dream so i think potentially he could end up in a resurgence for that role Buccaneers defense maybe got him a little too early, pick, uh, round nine. I maybe should have waited another round, but I was pretty comfortable with the rest of my roster. And so I was ready to make that move, and especially if the Buccaneers defense is as good as I think they're going to be this year, and I think they're going to be that fantasy defense this year. They may not be one of the best defenses in NFL history, but I think they're going to get a lot of sacks and they're going to create a lot of turnovers between interceptions and fumble recoveries. So that's kind of what I was looking at. Now, there are going to be games where they give up a lot of points. Uh, week one is going to be a good test, and that's going to be against Dallas, and we'll see how Dallas does against this very good defense. Now, if the Buccaneers absolutely got down Dallas with Dak coming back, with Zeke back healthy, uh, I think we could end up seeing a very dominant defense throughout the season. But, so, my team, spread out buys, in love, in hate with some of my picks. But, overall, I think I got a shot. Team Shield. <clears throat> Aaron Rodgers, uh, that he got on my screw-up. Um, Mixon and Davis at running backs, which I think is a good combo. A.J. Brown and Tyler Lockett in it, wide receivers. And his first round pick, number five overall, Travis Kelsey. And Kelsey's been going middle of, the, middle of the first round in a lot of drafts. And that's not a bad thing. He is literally a 100 reception, 1,000 yard receiver at a tight end position. And when you can have that position, which for most people maxes, you know, at a, a uh, 10 points if you get 10 points out of your your tight end position you're having a good day <clears throat> kelsey is a under 20 and it's a disappointment so he is that level of tight end so getting him at five overall probably a smart decision by miles then you got brandon cooks in at flex and he is a tough to say no to he he is so under on radar and disrespected this is a guy who comes out year in and year out and puts up a thousand yards and a hundred receptions or close to a hundred receptions and nobody talks about him and yet here he sits going what round seven brown's defense who he picked up last and was kind of discouraged by it but hey guess what miles they're still going to be a good defense one game against the chiefs mean anything but they're be good this year. Harrison Butker in a minute kicker. Gallup, Williams, Ruggs, Pollard, and Matt Ryan for the backups sitting on the bench. So, spreading out your bye weeks, you got 13 for Rodgers, 13 for Brown, and 13 for Brown's defense. You've got a backup quarterback, you're good. You don't have a backup defense, no worries. You don't have a backup kicker, no worries. Uh, and you don't have a backup tight end, no worries. People don't often do that. The worry is going to be the fact that you have Kelsey and Butker, so you're going to have to drop somebody on your roster in order to fill Week 12. You're going to have to drop two players. And then turn around, you got Aaron Rodgers uh, the next week on by. You're just going to have to rip one of those new picks that you just did, which you'll probably cycle out for whoever your tight end was 
uh, because you're going to put Kelsey right back in in week 13. Aside from that, pretty good looking on the bye weeks. I don't see any other danger zones that you're going to run into. No, no other danger zone. So I like this roster. Um, running backs, I'm a little uh, more skeptical about as far as being able to carry your team. But your wide receiver and your, your tight end pairing, you went head wide receiver and tight end. You, you went really, really money in those positions. Um, I'm not sold on Joe Mixon this year, coming back off an of injury, but also a, um, a banged or a, a uh, worked offensive line that has sort of, sort of been revamped good last year. So I'm a little worried about Joe Mixon being your RB1. But Mike Davis, I think, is actually going to have a pretty solid year. Brandon Cooks out of 99. That's right, Brandon Cooks out of 99. I wouldn't say they suck miles, but I would. I, that would be where if if there's any hole, thing, that's where your weak point is. I still think you're going to be good because you're running your wide receivers and your tight end are going to carry your team along with Aaron Rodgers. So I think you're going to be solid. I think you're going to be fine. Um, but I, I think your running backs are going to be the weak point in your roster. The Sharks, Jalen Hurts. So this was the number six overall pick. Jalen Hurts in at quarterback. Ezekiel Elliott for running back. Jamal Williams. Is this Jam No, Javante Williams. This is the Broncos running back. DK Metcalf, Devontae Smith, Darren Waller, Damian Harris, Broncos defense, Young Hoku kicker. On the bench, Raheem Mostert, Debo Samuel, Mike Williams, Tua... Elijah Moore. Hmm. This was the roster that I, when when the pick happened, I was a cause concern. Number one, you have both your quarterbacks having the same bye week. Two, my guess is two is going to have to go. You can't you can't have the quarterback on the same bye week. It just doesn't work. But then you also have Devontae Smith and your flex position with Damian Harris also on the same bye week. Yes, you have a wide receiver, wide receivers that you can fill in for both of those spots or a running back even. But the what, what's going to hurt, you're going to have to make the change soon before quarterbacks start to dwindle. Now, there are a few quarterbacks left in the waiver wire that could supplant either one of them, actually. The other cause for concern I'm seeing is you have Broncos defense and Javante Williams. If Williams ended, ends up as good as advertised, you're going to lose both your defense and your main running back, but you have Raheem Mostert right there, so you should be fine in that aspect. Tight end Darren Waller in Week 8. You don't have anybody else you're going to drop for that. Um, Young Hoku at 6. And you have uh, Mostert and Samuel that same week. Not a big deal, along with Elijah Moore. Not a big deal, so you're not really... I mean, you're going to have to drop somebody at some point. Um, so you can make some moves here. It, not a bit, not bad. As far as ranking this roster, um, I think Hertz is severely undervalued. He's very high ceiling this year. I'm a big fan of where Hertz could be this. Zeke, I think, should have a solid sleeper pick, absolutely. And I think he... He's going to be good enough for RB1, RB2 consideration this year. DK Metcalf is DK Metcalf. He's a freaking stud. Um, Devontae Smith, I think, is a little weak for wide receiver, too. I would have put him more in a flex area. Uh, I wouldn't have gone where, where they did with him. Darren Waller, um, fantastic tight end. That end in the NFL, uh, that's going to be very good. Flex position, Damian Harris. The scary part with, uh, with that roster, with the Patriots, is that it could be anybody, and it could be Ramondre Stevenson. Right, uh, that could rotate, and so this is a tough one to have on your active roster unless Bill Belichick does something air uncharacteristic and actually runs with them. Broncos defense, I think, is going to be uh, fairly solid this year with the return of some injuries that they've had. Young Hoku is a kicker, um, and then defense or uh, uh, backups are are backups. Brooks and Dungy, and uh, Mark was missed the first half of the draft. That I, I felt that his team for being an auto draft for the first half of the draft was actually very solid. And so looking at his team here, Dak Prescott, Saquon Barkley, Kareem Hunt, 
DeAndre Hopkins, Allen Robinson, Logan Thomas, Adam Thielen, Washington defense, um, Matt Gay, Matt Gay, uh, in at kicker, uh, Jamar Chase on the bench, Jones Jr., Chark, Mooney, and White. And one of the fears that I have when it comes to an auto draft, when that happens, number one is it overdrafts one position, which happens to be wide receiver, which it did a little bit, caught it towards the end. But also then it doesn't pay attention to the um, bye weeks. And then my concerns was that he was going to end up with uh, with some trouble. And week seven could potentially be that trouble. But I have a feeling that Mark is going to be savvy enough to uh, navigate his way through and make some changes. Um, Dak Prescott being week seven, Adam Thielen in the flex, Marvin Jones Jr. and DJ Chark not on the same team, obviously, all week seven. Um, but I think you've got enough, enough, enough players here that you could use white uh you know get yourself another quarterback when the time comes aside from that barkley robinson and chase and with mooney week 10 not an issue because you've got uh james white if need be um robinson and uh, you could supplant with any you know either of your wide receivers there uh look your tight end and washington ds a little bit uh, but I got again. I think you'll you'll probably have some reworking going on here. Logan Thomas is a solid tight end to have on your roster. Washington defense, I think, um, one of the top five defenses fantasy wise this year because I think they're going to have a lot of sacks this year. Um, and then your kicker, um, which again, nobody nobody really. Some put a backup quarterback, a backup tight end, uh, four wide receivers in a backup here. James White at running back as well. Overall, Dak Prescott. Very solid pick. Saquon Barkley is one of my biggest questions of the season. Just because I don't know how he's going to recover from injury, I, I can't put him in a top 10, which is why I passed him for Derrick Henry in this draft, just because I, I have a problem investing in him until I know how good his recovery is going to be. Kareem Hunt. Now, I passed on Kareem Hunt in the draft uh, in, a, in, a, in a certain position because uh, when Nick Chubb is on the field, Nick Chubb is, is the man. And Kareem Hunt only really goes in uh, when Chubb is either having a bad game or when he's hurt. And Hunt did spell uh, Chubb for a number of games last season when Chubb was nursing an injury. And he did fantastic because Hunt and Chubb finished neck and neck in points last year. And Hunt is more of the receiving back between the two of them, which pays into his favor for a PPR league. So we'll see how that goes. Um, he could be a very sneaky RB2 in this situation. D-Hop, you can't argue the man's abilities. Allen Robinson, my concern with him is how long the Andy Dalton experiment is going to last and until Justin Fields hits the floor. Um, I don't see an upside to Allen Robinson until then. Andy Dalton will get him some points, but Allen Robinson's capabilities are not going to go anywhere if Fields sees the floor. Um, Logan Thomas, good tight end. Adam Thielen, hard to say no to. Backups, um, Jones and Chark, uh, potential massive upside. Jamar Chase, massive upside. Mooney, again, not going to see that until Fields. My other concern is that you, uh, having the backups to your main guys with having, you know, Chark and Jones, having Mooney and, and Robinson. That's just my only other concern to that. Rocket. Al, uh, Josh Allen in at quarterback. Jonathan Tier and Miles Sanders in at running back. Calvin Ridley and Deontay Johnson for wide receivers. Mike Jacecki tight end. Shell at flex. Dolphins defense. Jason Sanders in at kicker. Miles Thomas, Marcus Calloway, Baker Mayfield, uh, Tony Jones Jr., and uh, Brian Edwards uh, on the bench. Um, a lot to down here. Number one, first problem I see is you have five week 14 buys. Jonathan Taylor, Miles Sanders, Dolphins defense, Jason Sanders kicker. Five starters that you have three with no backups to. Your tight end, your defense, and your kicker all have the same bye week. That is dangerous. That is extremely dangerous. Right there alone is three players you have to drop. Then the fact that both your starting running backs, where your money is supposed to be coming from, are now out. So you 
are going to have to put Sony Michelle in your flex up at your starting running back. Then you're going to have to put a backup running back, Tony Jones Jr., in at starting running back. And that's dangerous. Now you're going to have to also rotate a flex up, which would be, you know, Thomas or Callaway or Brian Edwards. So losing five of your starters in one week is a bad combination. Very bad com combination. That is dangerous. On top of that, then week six, you're losing Calvin Ridley, Michael Thomas, Marcus Calloway, and Tony Jones Jr. So now you're losing three wide receivers as well. So this is just all around dangerous to begin with. Um, I really would have been watching, if I was drafting in his position, I would have been watching those week 14s. Uh, I don't know if um, Team Pocket Rocket is a Miami Dolphins fan, and that's maybe what drove it. I don't know. Uh, but going Jacecki, Dolphins defense, and Jason Sanders, even if I'm talking about Taylor and, and, and Sanders, sorry, Jacecki, well, you got two Sanders on your team. Um, not even talking about Taylor and Sanders, but Jacecki, Dolphins, and, and Sanders, the kicker, it's dangerous right there, especially with no backups to any of those three on your roster. So be watching, for somebody like me especially, this is a roster I'll be watching throughout the season because I'm going to be watching who the uh, my guess would be Tony Jones Jr. to start with and potentially either Thomas or Callaway, which I would potentially pounce on those two. Uh, Brian Edwards, I don't think is going to be anything to have to worry about, but uh, I would expect the bottom two to have to go in order to fill these two spots. Rigo Smoke Shack, Trevor Lawrence in at quarterback, Josh Jacobs, Daryl Henderson Jr., Devontae Adams, Stefan Diggs, Noah Fant, C.D. Lamb, Rams defense, Graham Gano, and now we have, have Higgins, Fullen, Landry, and Fournette on the bench. Now, this is an interesting... So, looking at this, I don't see any issues with bye weeks. Yeah, you've got, you know, three 13s, two 11s, two 10s, seven with Lawrence, Diggs, and Lamb, but you've got wide receivers to change out. You're good there. No backup defense, no backup kicker, no issue. No backup tight end. They don't fall on the same week. Uh, actually, tight end and, and defense do, so that's going to be a potential issue. Um, no backup quarterback week seven, so you're going to need to swap there. But overall, you know, Trevor Lawrence, is, we don't know what we're going to see out of him yet. I don't have high hopes for him this year. Uh, Josh Jacobs and Daryl Henderson have a lot of potential this year, especially with Henderson. Uh, Cam Akers is that way. Uh, Josh Jacobs is is skeptical with ranked him higher earlier, and now I got thinking about it with uh, Kenyon Drake on the roster. Drake being a re more of a receiving back is going to take some timeshare away from Jacobs, where I think there's a lot of upside. That wide receiver tight end and flex area right there. Devontae Adams and Stefan Diggs. The fact you got Diggs and Adams on the same roster who finished 1-2 in fantasy wide receivers last year blows me a look at what the hell happened in round one and round two between your two picks. Because the, the, the unbelievable that that just happened. It, I'm actually upset that that happened. And it makes me mad that Adams and Diggs were at least five picks apart. And, well, let's see here. Dean was 12, 11, pick nine. So if he was pick nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, so six, there was seven picks apart. Seven picks apart, put Devontae Adams and Stefan Diggs on the same roster. Okay? I want you guys to think about that. I want you guys to think about that. We, as a league, let them put Devontae Adams and Stefan Diggs on the same roster. So let that sink in. And then you paired it with Noah Fant, which was a good call. I'm a, a big upside of Noah Fant guy. I think Noah Fant was slept on, and I think he could be fantastic this season, especially with the quarterback. And I think Bridgewater is actually going to have a pretty decent year. 
CD Lamb now is also another guy that, that I was high on, who I think is going to be a top 10 fantasy wide receiver this year. So now we're adding in Adams, Diggs, and CD Lamb to this. With Dak Prescott coming back and Dak Prescott potentially being healthy enough to play really, really, really freaking well, CD Lamb is a scary wide receiver option. I could, I honestly could see Adams, Diggs, and Lamb averaging 20 plus points per week for Rigo Smoke Shack. Backups T. Higgins, Will Fuller. Fuller's going to be good when he comes back. And then Jarvis Landry falls to him. A PPR god. This is a guy who puts up knee receptions every season. Unbelievable. Now, OBJ comes back. Yes, he's going to steal some attention away from Jarvis Landry. But Jarvis Landry is one of the best possession receivers in the NFL. He's a first down machine. I don't see any reason why Jarvis Landry won't put up top 20 numbers. No reason why he won't. And OBJ being on the field is only going to make it so that they can't double team Landry. Landry saw a lot of double teams last year. He was the most double teamed wide receiver on the Browns roster last year. That's going to now go away with OBJ back on the field. So Rigo Smoke Shack, questionable running backs. Really good receiving core. I'm kind of jealous of this of this area of the roster right here. Right here. Jealous of this. I hate you some days. White Show 305. Kyler Murray. Antonio Gibson. DeAndre Stent running backs. Tyreek Hill and Brandon Ayuk at wide receiver. Mark Andrews at tight end. LaVisca Chenault at Flex, Page Defense, Brandon McManus, Kicker, Melvin Gordon, Trey Sermon, Michael Carter, uh, Johnson, and the Bees on the bench. Breaking down the weeks by weeks first. Um, pair of nines, pair of twelves, sixes. Could get a little, 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 little fine, actually. It's pretty spread out. Nice job. White, white 305. Nice job with the uh, spread on your bye weeks. Going over the roster, Kyler Murray, I think, is going to be a nightmare to defend this year. And I think he's going to be a top for ish fantasy quarterback because I think he's going to do a lot with his legs here. Antonio Gibson, top 10 running back. Um, I think he's going to have a fantastic year this year. DeAndre Swift. It's going to be okay. Where I'm liking his roster is Tyreek Hill and Brandon Ayuk. I think Brandon Ayuk is going to take a big jump this with either Garoppolo or Trey Lance throwing him the ball. Um, last year, he had a hodgepodge amount of uh, quarterbacks throwing him the ball, and it didn't work well, well for him. He still did pretty well, but with Garoppolo coming, coming back this year, Garoppolo is still a better quarterback than what he was working with last year. Even if Trey Lance is in there, that's still an upgrade. And Trey Lance, a lot of people are saying that he was having issues with his accuracy in preseason. He really wasn't. His having problems catching the ball. There was nine drops between two games that his receivers and running backs had. Nine drops. He had the most incompletions of the rookie quarterbacks, the first round rookie quarterbacks during the preseason. And that was because of drops. And a bunch of people were saying he throws an uncatchable ball. Bullshit. North Dakota, and those are not first round draft pick wide receivers. Those are not second round draft pick wide receivers. Those were guys who are going UDFAs. That's Ben Ellison who got cut from the Jaguars who just signed with the Vikings. That's guys like that. Not first round, second round, third round receivers in the NFL who are trained to catch these passes. So to say that he's throwing an uncatchable ball is BS. He was playing with guys who are potentially bubble players. He very rarely got to see the first team. He very rarely got to throw uh, uh, anybody like a Brandon Ayuk or George Kittle. For. These guys are going to catch the ball. Trey Lance is accurate. Trey Lance is going to get him the ball. Brandon Ayuk is going to see a big uptick if uh, Trey Lance is on the field. Either way, Jimmy 
Garoppolo on the phone would be awesome for him. Mark Andrews, tight end, another good another good pickup for him because Mark Andrews is going to be the safety blanket for Lamar Jackson. Mark Andrews just got extended. And if Lamar Jackson doesn't have any receivers to throw to, he's going to have to throw to Mark Andrews. LaVisca Chenault, massive upside. If Trevor Lawrence, Trevor Lawrence is expected to be, big time. Patriots get a bunch of their defenders back. This could be good for them. Brandon McManus is one of the biggest legs in the, in the NFL. The bench is the bench. I'm a little skeptical of a couple of the guys bees who knows uh david johnson is washed up gordon won't be the starting running back for long trey sermon is a good pickup i like the trey sermon pick right there because i think by my week four he's gonna be the starting running back for the 49ers all right let's jump over to rad lamar jackson Quarterback Austin Eckler and Najee Harris at running backs. Wide receivers Cooper, Amari, and Mike Evans with TJ Hawkinson at tight end. Robbie Anderson at the flex. Steelers defense Greg Zerline at kicker. Backups James Conner, Marquise Brown, Michael Pittman, Tyrone Williams, or is this the other Williams? Tyson Williams, running backs, and Lev Bell also signed to the Ravens. This is an odd concoction. Number one, the first problem I'm seeing is all the week sevens. Both your starting running backs are week seven, along with your number one receiver. That's dangerous. That's a lot of points. Week seven is going to be a throwaway week for Radzlowski. Also, your Steelers defense and your kicker are week seven. So you're losing five players right there that are your bread and butter. Now, do you have the running backs to replace those two? Sure, but you also have two of your running backs are on the same roster. And then you have, you know, you could move Robbie Anderson up into your starting wide receiver role, and you could have Pittman in your, or Marquise Brown in your, you're still going to have to drop a couple in order to get your defense and your kicker because they're the same week, and you're going to lose a tremendous amount of points because of your running backs. Amari Cooper, only one wide receiver you're losing that week, no big deal. But that is dangerous grounds to walk on. Week 8, losing Lamar Jackson, Marquise Brown, Tyson Williams, and Lev Bell, which I'm assuming you're going to have some shift in your roster here because you're not going to keep both Will Williams and, and Bell. Um, week 9, Evans and It's doable. So... Ranking the roster here, Lamar Jackson, I have as my number one overall quarterback for fantasy football. Um, I just think he's going to have a breakout or a, another uh, MVP SEs. Austin Eckler, uh, oh, back to the Lamar Jackson. One of the reasons why I think he's going to do that is because of the injury to J.K. Dobbins. More legs of Lamar Jackson. Eckler, solid running back. That's a good pickup. Najee Harris, that had to kill him taking Najee Harris. Um, Najee Harris is a question mark to me, another one of the bigger question marks in fantasy football for me. And that is because of having to play behind a hodgepodge offensive line. And I don't know how that offense of the Steelers is going to hold up this, this year. So I'm really curious about Najee Harris. He could be a PPR dream this year because of his ability to catch out of the backfield. Amari Cooper, Mike Evans is a good combo at wide receiver. Um, I just I worry about the Bucks players with drafting them that high just because of how many mouths there are to feed. Hawkinson, I think, is going to be a tremendous tight end. Close that gap of the first to the next group of tight ends because Jared Goff's going to need a, sa a safety blanket, and that could end up being Hawk. Absolutely could be Hawk. Robbie Anderson, uh, I think, could be a really solid option for Sam Darnold this year. And Team Lee Landers. Last team aft, and we have Matt Stafford as quick. Aaron Jones Woods, Cortland Sutton at wide receiver, John U. Smith at tight end, David Montgomery at flex, Bill's defense, and uh, Jason Myers. I think it's Jason Myers, right? Yeah. At kicker with Godwin, Hines, Claypool, Madison, and Aw on the bench 
Um, I'm seeing a lot of double digit bye weeks on your starters, and you have uh, another person with your starting running backs being the same week. That is very dangerous because those are a lot of points you're leaving uh, that week. And then your starting receiver quarterback also have the same bye week. Again, that's very dangerous because that's that's your bread and butter points that you're losing right there. Um, defense and kicker, no backups there, no big deal. Jonu Smith at tight end, uh, also no backup there, no big deal. You're going to have to stream those anyways. Uh, and then Matthew Stafford, no, no backup quarterback. So no backups to any of those uh, one-spot players. Uh, but again, most people don't anyways. But I'm... My concern is going to be week 13 and week 11 uh, because you are losing massive points um, between those spots right there. And th that's where it becomes dangerous when you have your star, your two starts with the same bye week. That can kill you and that can turn your entire, if, you're, if you were going strong all season long and then all of a sudden that right there changes the trip your team because you lose all your momentum that's a killer <clears throat> so that's where you got, got to be really careful overall for the team i like the stafford pick i think that's a great quarterback uh pick to have uh because i think he's going to put up a lot of fantasy points this year <coughs> um outside of bye weeks <coughs> excuse me aaron jones and nick chubb fantastic picks um i, I think they're going to put up a lot of fantasy points this year as well woods and sutton uh, Woods tied to Matt Stafford right there. Uh, I think Woods is going to see a lot of success in Cortland Sutton. I, I think Judy's going to have the better year this year, but Sutton is a, still a strong candidate for a, a wide receiver too. Jonu Smith, one of the best uh, tight ends over the last few years. He's kind of on the way down right now, but he's going. he went over to the uh, Patriots, so that could be a big uptick for his value going forward. Uh, but it all depends on the type of sets they run. Because what if all of a sudden Hunter Henry's fine and it, they're running two receiver sets or two tight end sets and Hunter Henry gets a lot of looks his way because he's also a very good playmaker. David Montgomery in at the flex position. Uh, Montgomery is a very good running back for the Bears and I think he's going to be even better when Justin Fields takes the field. Bill's defense, um, they were kind of a letdown last year. I, I don't know if I would trust them this year. And then Godwin... Hines is going to take a lot of um, uh, receptions away from Jonathan Taylor. Claypool is massive value. I think he's going to end up being either your flex or your wide receiver two over uh, Madison and McKissick, our backups. And uh, that's I'm going to close this out and get us changed over. So hopefully it'll speed my computer back up here. <clears throat> 